Please welcome Microsoft Azure Partner Architect, Strategic Planning and Architecture, Brian Kelly. Thank you. And I hope you're all having a great summer this morning. It's great to be back here in Dublin. So uh, I'm going to start today, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Microsoft Ireland. So Ireland is a leading European technology hub. And Microsoft established operations in Ireland in 1985 and employs more than 3,500 people, representing 90 different nationalities across a variety of roles, including operations, sales, engineering, and product development. Collectively, Microsoft data centers offer over 2 million square foot of data center floor space. That's the equivalent to 35 American football fields or for 26 soccer fields, all in one region. And that's how strategically important Ireland is to Europe. So globally, infrastructure growth is set to continue as the tech industry is building out infrastructure at an unprecedented scale. For decades, the oil industry was the undisputed leader of capital expenditure, fueling the engines of the global economy. But today, in the era of AI, that mantle has shifted to technology. According to Morgan Stanley, four hyperscalers are projecting CapEx spend greater than 300 billion in 2025. We're in the midst of the largest and most complex infrastructure build out of our generation. At Microsoft, we're taking a full stack systems approach to this build out, scaling performance while being energy and capital efficient with sustainability and security designed throughout. This has required us to reimagine the engineering paradigm through traditional boundaries between data center, silicon servers, racks, and network had to blur. Software, hardware, data centers are now all co-designed, co-optimized as one system, and designed with sustainability and security at every layer of the stack. Examples of this co-designed infrastructure are power delivery infrastructure. And you heard about this Mount Diablo rack from, from Google and Meta earlier. As the number of AI accelerators in Iraq increased, we needed to address the power and space constraints of our current infrastructure. We also needed to deliver power more efficiently to meet the evolving demands of AI systems. We collaborated with Meta and Google to design this 400 volt DC disaggregated power rack. Similarly, we also needed to redesign cooling engineered for higher performance, featuring enhanced airflow, resilience, high availability, hot swap serviceability. This cooling rack can be integrated into existing data centers, even those not equipped with facility water cooling. It's designed to support solutions from multiple hardware manufacturers. These cooling and power designs are being contributed to the open community. And I said sustainability was designed throughout the stack. So Microsoft just earlier uh, this month announced a significant milestone on our journey to becoming zero waste by 2030. We achieved over 90% reuse on, on recycling of our servers and components in 2024. This exceeds our 2025 target. By redesigning systems to reduce waste, we're saving cost and gaining efficiency. Microsoft is expanding its circular centers. Since opening our first circular center in Amsterdam in 2020, we've built five additional circular centers, including one here in Dublin. As you heard, AI racks have already passed 140 kilowatts. You would have heard Google talk about the journey to 500 kilowatts. And while we're on this journey to become carbon negative, carbon free electricity is a core part of our strategy. While being energy efficient, Microsoft has contracted over 34 gigawatts of renewable energy across 24 countries. 
For Ireland, this includes 900 megawatts of renewable energy agreements. It's not just carbon-free electricity that's important. Our carbon-negative neg strategy requires innovations throughout the infrastructure. For example, to reduce steel and concrete in our data center designs, Microsoft's newest data centers use cross-laminated timber. Compared to traditional concrete data centers, this reduces embodied carbon emissions by 65%. And to be water positive, Microsoft's new optimized AI data centers consume zero water for cooling. By adopting chip level cooling solutions, we deliver precise temperature controls without water evaporation. In the future, the only water in these da data centers will be for administrative purposes. It's a remarkable thing. The only water used in a data center will be for drinking by the technicians that work there. I also want to talk about security. We design security through every layer of our infrastructure, and this is why. According to the World Economic Forum, if cybercrime was an economy, it would be the third largest economy after the US and China. It's projected to cost the world more than 10 trillion in 2025. In 2024, it was 9.2 trillion. That's a staggering cost, but it shows the size of this threat. So to combat this threat and to conform with digital sovereignty regulations, Microsoft's EU data boundary and cloud for sovereignty are key innovations. Microsoft has only over 17 data centers in Europe facilitating the EU data boundary. Microsoft introduced the EU data boundary in 2021 and this initiative upholds European values for data protection, data residency, and data control. It provides enhanced transparency with local policy packs tailored for regions. And Microsoft's Cloud for Sovereignty protects workloads using advanced digital sovereignty technologies such as confidential compute and hardware security modules. And to step a little deeper into some of these technologies, in November, Microsoft announced Azure Integrated HSM an innovative and modular approach to scaling HSMs, where HSMs ship in every new server, as opposed to building them out separately, and when they need to be used, they need to be checked out of the HSM for use. Instead, they can be directly attached to the workload while still protected to the highest standard. And confidential computing. Confidential computing is a frontier security technology aimed at protecting data in use through the use of hardware-based trusted execution environments. And Microsoft Trustworthy AI, confidential inferencing provides the strongest protection for model weights and sensitive data sets. If we look at confidential computing, confidential computing is a technology designed to protect workloads such as virtual machines from all other software in the system, including the hypervisor. It complements encryption at rest and encryption in transit by encrypting and protecting data in use inside trusted execution environments. These trusted execution environments are cryptographically measured by the hardware root of trust. The hardware root of trust is an important element in confidential compute. It anchors the chain of trust in hardware and provides protection assurances to the workloads that run on these systems. The root of trust has matured through OCP innovations and has become table stakes for secure devices. In 2022, Microsoft, along with AMD, Google, and NVIDIA, and Open Compute, announced Calyptra 1.0, a fully open source silicon root of trust. This week, we formally released Calyptra 2.0. This builds upon the root of trust capabilities of the previous version and offers full security subsystem capabilities. As part of Calyptra 2.0, we've included Atoms Bridge, an open source quantum resilient cryptographic accelerator. AI is rapidly advancing scientific breakthroughs, and one such field is quantum computing. And with new technologies comes new risk. And with quantum computing, it poses a risk to cryptography, where the classical algorithms used in hardware today are easily compromised by a powerful enough quantum computer. And Atoms Bridge and Calyptra 2.0 prevent that and future-proof our hardware security. And the next stop in our open source innovation on Calyptra 
will be OCP lock. And this is a key management block that protects storage encryption keys and isolates them inside a trusted hardware block. The latest lock specification is available already through OpenCompute. And later this year, that specification will be finalized and Calyptra will be released with those lock capabilities already in the silicon. And future secure storage devices will have this capability. So sustainability and security are first order principles on our, on our infrastructure journey. Community participation is needed to drive the next wave of innovation, whether it's sustainability, security, or any other area. So I'll leave you with this message today. Innovation begins when curiosity meets collaboration. So if you're curious and you aren't already involved in an OCP project, I would encourage you today to reach out and join. There's no other standards body out there with the breadth of full stack infrastructure and technology projects. So with that, I want to thank you all. Thank you.